911, what is your emergency? Uh, my wife just saw a guy get shot by the Hale Reservoir. Okay. Do you know what happened? Okay. I saw, I heard a bunch of shots, and I thought it might just be firecrackers, and I kept walking towards the reservoir, and one, I saw one man go down, roll over, and he's still like he was dead. Okay. And then I saw another man... I heard another shot, and this one man started falling over. This man was running down the hill towards him with a gun. He said, just leave me alone, leave me alone. And this man shot him point blank twice more. Okay, hold on, let me tell my officer. Okay. 911, what is your emergency? Oh, my God, me and my friends, this kid pulled a gun on us and then pistol with us in the head. Units responding. The male with a gun is last seen by Hale Reservoir. The uh, caller left the area, unknown if he's left the area or direction from there. The only to check his young male, no further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was with my friends in their garage playing card games for most of the night, and around 10, 10.30 or so, I went longboarding, and then I injured myself and came home. Did you, uh, earlier that day, did you get into a, a text conversation regarding the girl? I did. Texted him once, basically told him, if I see you, I'm going to be pissed and kick your ass. And then he didn't text back all day. And then finally I started getting text messages from his phone saying, I'm going to kill you, you're dead, let's fight, let's do this, whatever. And so when we got those messages, I guess, challenging you, did you accept the challenge? Started walking to where he told me to meet me. And where were you supposed to meet him at? The tunnel at Anchor Park. Sebastian walked up, told us his name was Dylan, and said he was taking us to meet Tanner. He was completely cool the whole way. Uh, did he at any time throughout any of this ever appear angry to you? Didn't appear angry, threatening. Anything. We were supposed to wait, and then Sebastian had walked off, on, got on his phone, I guess, came back and told us Tanner would be here in 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And that's when I said, if we can get out of this, shake hands and leave, that'd be cool. And Corey said, we're just here to make sure it's a fair fight. And he pulled again, said, I'm not going to fight fair. So what do you know about that shooting? Just what I uh, saw from the text, and I actually read the IR article this morning. Okay. Did you know any of those guys? I don't even know who they are. They, they didn't really say any names. Okay. We've okay. talked to many people since we came out last night at 9.31. And that brought us to be in here with you in this room, because I think you can help us out with this. Okay. We need to hear your side. But I cannot help you if I walk out of here with the story that you got hurt on your longboard. We have too much physical evidence. We've talked to too many people. We have too many witnesses that can point a finger. And so we're here treating you like a man, treating you with respect. But Sebastian, I need to hear your story. I need to hear the truth. Give me a reason. But how can I help you if you have the facts and I don't? We're not operating on the same basis of knowledge. S Sebastian? We're past that, man. We are, we are so past that. The gun was in your hand. I can't remember exactly where I was standing. I was standing like right here. Corey was right there. Sebastian was kind of over here. Or not Sebastian, but Connor. Sebastian was right there. And he whipped out the gun. And that's when Corey, he walked right in front of me. And he said, what the f*** are you going to do? Shoot us? And shot Corey right in the face. And, uh, then he clipped me twice in the chest, and I was kind of like startled a little bit. Then he shot Connor, and I, I went running up the hill this way. I made it to like right about here, somewhere around here. Actually, I think it's right here. And all I remember, I was running. And by the time I got here, I looked down, and I saw there was blood on my hands. And then I just remember falling to my face. Next thing I knew, I woke up. Sebastian was walking this way. He held the gun to my head, and then I just remember I blacked out. Did you see the lady down at the bottom of the hill watching you? No, I didn't. Yeah. So the one guy didn't run away, and you shot five rounds. And number one, you were shooting five rounds at a guy who was running away? 
That's not fearing, man. That's that's trying to kill. Uh, well, I wasn't sure if I shot the uh, one. When of they go down to the ground. Side. Ugh. And the one, what did he say? What did he say? Please, please leave me alone, or, or please just let leave me live, or yeah. something. Something like that. Something. Along those what lines. did you do? Well, what did he say? You helped me because I wasn't there. I, I don't want to work was, That was basically. But you remember exactly what he said. Um, please, uh, please don't shoot. Please don't hurt. Please don't hit me. I don't know. Something along what you said. What did you do? I, uh, I kept shooting and then I hit. I didn't say anything. And then you hit what? Uh, I hit him with the pistol. Show me how. The last message Corey recorded on my phone says, Happy Mother's Day, I love you. But I'll never hear those words from Corey's voice again. I wish I could play that message for you so you could see how vibrant, alive, and happy Corey was. I will never forget the night that a man dressed in a suit knocked on my door. When he asked if Corey Andrewski was our son, my maternal instinct immediately told me something was terribly wrong. He then said, I'm sorry, Corey has passed away. Those haunting words will echo in my mind. Even in the middle of the night, when I eventually do fall asleep, that's what I hear. Corey's passed away. Corey's passed away. Corey's passed away. The truth is, Sebastian, you were there for the sole purpose of committing cold-blooded murder. You saw this as a perfect opportunity to use the new handgun you had just acquired. Perhaps more accurately, in your mind, an opportunity had finally arrived and it was the opportunity you had been waiting for and planning since you required that new handgun. You went to Anchor Park to murder someone, anyone. Even though none of these boys had even a cross word with you and there was no animosity between any of you and these boys, even though you told them you were just a neutral party, even though they had done nothing to provoke or anger you, you placed your bike by a telephone pole, pulled out your gun, and said, I don't fight fair. Your carnage was premeditated. You knew exactly what you were doing. You are a vile demon. You lured those boys up the hillside that you surveyed and selected in advance, a place in the gully where you thought your crime would go undetected. My recommendation is not made with malice, or with ulterior motive or revenge, I come here today with one deep down burning desire, and that's to see the justice be served and I can find peace. So in other words, Sebastian, we should eliminate, eradicate, do away with, get rid of, put an end to your existence. In all good conscience, I think you deserve to be executed. Sebastian, may God pity you. At the very minimum, a life sentence without ever having the possibility of parole. Why should you ever be given another chance? Certainly, my son does not get another second in life. It's so weird though, every time I come up here I have tears of joy because I know he's resting in peace. And I can feel his presence. It almost feels like he's standing right there next to me.